What's up, everybody? Hey, three things, three keys to running the race that God has for you. Number one, um, start the race. You can't win any races you don't get in. You can't uh, participate. No awards. Nothing. No successes, no failures. If you're not running the race, you can't lose or win. So, uh, number one in running this race that God has for you, you have to start it. And what does it mean by starting the race? That means that you're all in. Like, in order to be a son of God, to be a part of the sonship of God, it requires you to give everything that you got. It requires you to sell out. Say, God... All of me wants all that you are. All of me will read the word, will, will pr find myself lost in prayer. I want all of you. And I want all that comes with that. So starting the race that God has for you, it, it, or being a part of the race that God has for you, you really have to start being involved in it. You have to be involved in the race. Like People can sign you up. People can tell you you're this or you're that, but until you start that race, it doesn't, doesn't matter. You don't, until you start walking in the direction God has, has called you to, it doesn't matter. You have to start the race. I hope that makes sense because a lot of times I, I've seen people in the past that they're those that are in leadership. They go to church, they love the Lord, but they're not really in the race. They're not actually running this thing. They're halfway in and they're halfway out. I heard somebody say this the other day that if you live halfway in the world and you live halfway uh, in the church, that you'll never receive the full benefits of either or. You only have partial portions of the benefits that, that God has for you and the, the partial benefits that the world has for you. Are you in? Or are you out? What are you talking? In or out or what? Mm -mm. No time for questions, just action. In or out. Okay, well then I'm out. I'm sorry, Jet. Actually, you're already in. Okay. And that's so true. You're either in the world, receiving all the benefits that the world has for you, which requires way more, or not more, it requires way different standards than there is in living for God that requires you just to sell out and give him everything. Like lay it at his feet. Say, all that I am, I want you to, to direct and mold and, and make me. So if you're going to start the race, um, you really have to start it for yourself. And, and I was saying, I've seen people that are in leadership um, that, that pick and choose people in their church to do things when they're not qualified, not qualified. They're not called to that, obviously. There's some things that a pastor or a leader that is over your life can see that God is showing them that, that they tune in and they they try to help you um, become all that God is calling you to be. But there are some that just throw you in. You're gonna be um, you're gonna be a youth pastor when you're not ready to be a youth pastor. You're not ready to serve people. You're not ready to be over anybody. And so. When you start the race, you know, you know that you're called to do something and you're doing it and you're giving everything that you have. So number one is you have to start the race. You start the race. Um, number two is you have to be patient. This is very difficult for so many people because God's timing is not our time. God's timing is not our timing. He does what he wants when he wants. Yes, we can lean into the father and we can learn more and the more we 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 read our word the more that we lean into him in prayer um he he begins to speak to us and yes there are some things that the lord will will tune you in and let you understand what's going on there are some things the lord's like just be patient have faith you know Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of the things not seen. It's it's you you have to have faith that God is working all things out for the good of them that love him. And so and are called according to his excellent purpose. Um you have to be patient. And a lot of people will serve God, they'll start this race, and they'll get to going and they're like they're so excited, but yet 
they're trying to serve God off of worldly timing. God goes by his own timing. Okay. And so you get frustrated at God saying, well, you said that I was going to be, and you said that I was going to be a part, or you said you were going to, but yet you're not doing it. I've seen so many people, and even myself, have been caught up in this, where you turn to, you, you actually just walk away from what God has in store for you because you're you're not patient. You can't wait on the Lord. And that's what the scripture says. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Obviously, it requires a lot of strength. It requires a lot of faith. It requires a lot of, 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 of character to wait on God. And say, so, okay, God, if, if it's not happening now, there must be something that isn't in place yet for me to do or to be what you've called me to be. And whether it's somebody else that's not ready or what's me that's not ready, Lord, show me how to be ready. Do what I, Let me do what I can in this moment in time so that I am ready when the door opens and let you walk me into that. So number one is to start the race. Number two is to be patient. And number three, to me, this is probably the most important is this is uh, a group race. Number three, this is a group race and you're not in competition. And living for God, you're not in competition. This one you have to learn because if you don't get this, if you don't realize that this thing is bigger than you and then it's not about you, then you're going to fail. You're going to fall flat on your face because it'll all be about you. And then you will take, and you'll start taking credit for the things that the Lord gives you. And it's all about what God, it's your ministry and it's this and that. And I get it, I get it. We're running a race. We're so excited. We want to do things for the Lord. And yes, we, we don't want it to be a waste of time and we want to be known so that we can be used and some people take it to the extremes and then they just want to be known so they can have money. And we know those people, you know, we know those people that absolutely abuse all of this, but don't let that be you. You're in, you're not in competition. This is a group effort. Like if you're running a race and you see someone struggling, it's your job. If you see them struggling to reach out a hand give them some advice if they can handle that advice here's and here's a thought too think about this you're in competition yeah you're not in competition and um it's it's a group thing god's called us to be his sons and daughters to 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 tell people about him that's our message to proclaim jesus the gospel that's our job to Tell as many people about Jesus as possible and allow them to move in, help them become discipled and learn to have a relationship with, with Jesus. That's our job. Super simple, right? I know some people uh, want to use, you know, the marketplace as, as their calling and this and that. And God has many different callings for many different people. And here's the thing. We're all different. God is doing things differently. But the, the, the foundation of what we're called to do is to lead people to Jesus and to help disciple them and bring them closer to him. And so uh, here, here's where wisdom and, and clarity and knowledge has to come in. It's like if you're called to do a thing and you know by beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's the Lord, that, that's fantastic do it but don't get mad when somebody you're you're giving someone advice or you post a post or you say something and they don't receive what you're having what you're saying because they're not where you are they god may still be working other things out in their race they're back here when it comes to knowledge and clarity in the word of god you're here yelling at these people to get right but they're trying and you, you could just put a stumbling block right in front of them. And now, because of you, when they see the things that you've said, they're immediately going to turn from that because they're going to think that, man, I don't want to be like that person. And then it's going to take the Lord some time to go, that wasn't a stumbling block, but that person was. 
what they were saying was correct, but the spirit they gave was wrong. The attitude they gave was wrong. Yes, you need to go that way. But we're so quick to go, <clears throat> I know so much. I, you have to listen to me. Okay? Talk when the Lord tells you to talk. Say what the Lord tells you to say. Pray about it. Open your mouth. Talk to the Lord. Ask him, you know, what is it that you want me to, how do you want me to, to, to approach these people? Are they babies or are they elders? That makes a huge difference. You can go to elders and give them all stakes. You can say exactly what the Lord has showed you. But you can't take a bunch of babies, a room full of babies, and give them all stakes when they don't have teeth yet. They can't eat. They have no, no tools necessary to even eat the thing that you're giving them. And that's how it is in the church world. Like We're trying to make young people digest all of this stuff when God says, work out your own salvation of fear and trembling. Let me handle these. Let God cook. Let him cook now. Let him cook. Let him do what he does best, which is lead people, love people, show them the truth, because he is the truth. And the scripture is. And so I, I, I want to encourage people, like if you're in this race and you've started it, if you haven't started it, start now. Start it for yourself. Not because your mom, your dad, your auntie, your uncle said that you could. Don't even look at them, okay? Don't even look at them. Say, Jesus, what do you have for me? Open up the scriptures. Start in the beginning. You start in Genesis or you start in Matthew. Just pick one. Pick somewhere. Read the word. Find Jesus in it. Apply that to your life. So number one, start that. If you started the race, fantastic. Keep going. But you could be that person that's very impatient. And you're like, God, I'm ready to do something for you. Stop. Everything you do has to go through the Father. Look to Jesus every single time you make a move. Be patient. Ask the Lord, why is these doors not opening? Why are these doors not opening? Lord, I've been standing in this waiting room for years now. And maybe it's your attitude. You know, and I'm not judging you, but I'm just saying every everybody else is going to. Maybe your attitude is the problem that's keeping you from going into the next season because you have an awful attitude. You don't know how to approach people that don't agree with you. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's that you have a lust issue and the Lord knows as soon as you go into the next season of your life, that lust issue is going to be put on blast because somebody's going to see you. Somebody's going to catch you. And the Lord's like, I don't want you to do that to yourself because he has grace and he wants to, to keep you. Maybe you just have a doctrinal issue. What do you mean? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? And the Lord's trying to say, okay, hold on. You love me, but yet you keep these traditions of men, and this is going to hinder you from moving into where I've called you to go. And, and if, if you've already started and you're, you're in the middle of it, and you're just so impatient, like stop, breathe. Remember that it's all about Jesus. Remember that. Start there. God, I'm coming back to the basics. My favorite song is I'm coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about you. Once you, once you start there and you stay there, everything else changes because he begins to show you your flaws. He begins to show you the things that are going to hinder you in the next season of your life. And so pay attention to that. Be a stu good steward of that. <clears throat> Take uh, note of the things that you're really good at. Continue practicing preaching. Continue talking to yourself. Continue creating sermons if you're a preacher can if you're an evangelist do the same thing if you're a teacher you begin to take notes study the word differently go back and just look at it maybe the lord has a different perspective for you maybe he's waiting maybe he's waiting but he knows best i promise you that and then the third nobody is trying to compete against anybody there's billions of people in this world and i'm going to reach some that you're not going to reach and you're going to reach some that I'm not going to reach, but when we're working together, how the scripture says, how can two walk together except they agree? We've got to both agree that this thing is about Jesus and that we're going to walk together and say, I need you. You need me. 
and we're going to push each other. We're going to be there for each other. There's so many people that just want to be takers. The scripture says that it's better to give than it is to receive. There's so many people that just want a word all of the time. They can't handle themselves. I need the Lord to speak to me again because he's given me 35 words and they're all the same, but yet I just don't know what direction to go. I'm looking for that one missing piece. No, the missing piece is, is prayer and the word and then leaning into the Lord and letting him do what he wants to do in your life. And knowing that you're not competing with Brother Charlie, you're not competing with Brother Ben, you're not competing with competing with Sister Mary. No matter what you're doing, your job is to birth the thing that God has given you and to bring it forth because you don't know what it's going what it's going to bring, what fruits it's going to bring forth. So, I just want you guys to be encouraged. Remember these three things: start the race, be patient, and you're not in competition. We need each other. We need each other. And so, uh, yeah, that's all. Be encouraged. I'll catch you in the next one.